From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Clark Gable in The Buccaneer with Olamp Bradna, Akeem Tamiroff, and Gertrude Michael. Lux presents Hollywood. In The Buccaneer, we bring you the romance, the thrilling drama of Jean Lafitte, hero and rogue of old Louisiana. Tonight's special guest is the distinguished author and historian, Mr. Rupert Hughes. Louis Silvers conducts our music. We want you to know how much we appreciate your loyalty. Your daily use of Lux Flakes makes it possible for us to bring you this program. Did you ever think of this? You can save steps and make your work go faster if you keep Lux handy in these two places where you can use it most. In the bathroom for stockings and other things, and in the kitchen to help guard your hands from dishpan roughness. So it's a good idea to get two or more boxes of Lux Flakes at a time. And here's another tip I'd like to pass on to you. You'll save money if you buy Lux in the large size package. We hear now from the producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. (laughs) Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Behind the making of The Buccaneer was my hope that this picture would be something more than entertainment, that it would revive the memory of a hero whom history has all but forgotten. Springing out of the swamps of Louisiana, out of the mire of infamy, this fabulous figure scattered one of the blackest nights in American history with the bright flame of victory. He was Jean Lafitte, the ruthless lord of Barataria, a pirate island only 90 miles from New Orleans. He was Jean Lafitte, the pirate patriot, who, with Andrew Jackson, saved New Orleans in the War of 1812, and of whom Byron wrote, he left a corsair's name to other times, linked with one virtue and a thousand crimes, and without whom all America west of the Mississippi might now belong to England. No one knows where Lafitte came from or where he's buried. As for his soul, it might be in paradise or purgatory, He earned a place in either. But tonight, Lafitte roars out of oblivion, brought to us by one of the most celebrated personalities the screen has ever known, Clark Gable. Mr. Gable is a Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer star, currently appearing in Too Hot to Handle. His next picture is Idiot's Delight. Olamp Bradner, Paramount's lovely Parisienne, makes our Lux debut in the role of Gretchen. As Dominic Yu, we give you that priceless performer, Akeem Tamirov. In the part of Annette, Gertrude Michael makes her initial bow on this stage, and Clara Blandick is heard as Aunt Charlotte. On to Louisiana. It's curtain time and star time, as the Lux Radio Theater presents Clark Gable in The Buccaneer with Olymp Bradner, Akeem Tamiroff, and Gertrude Michael. In 1814, the citizens of New Orleans often saw a printed notice brazenly displayed in public places. It read, Sale of rare and notable goods this day at the temple. It was signed Jean Lafitte. The temple, seen of this thieves' bazaar, was a clearing in the cypress swamps. There, beneath tendrils of dripping moss, Jean Lafitte and his pirate crew insolently hawked their wares. Through the crowd strolled pirate musicians, their faces lean and scarred, their music gay, The good people of New Orleans came to look and stayed to buy. No one asking where the goods came from. No one dared to ask. Now, what do you mean it ain't the best? Uh, That's the best Manila neckweed. Or the best Manila rope. Silver? Did you say silver, mister? Look at this. Only one Spanish dollar. One dollar. Perfume sweet like Arabi. Monsieur, you want to buy some little perfume? Thank you, no. I'm looking for Jean Lafitte. Ah, Lafitte? <laughs> what for? <laughs> Do I look like a soldier? You? <laughs> no. Then you can tell me. This is business. Oh, business. Well, now look. You see that man standing by himself over there? That is Jean Lafitte. Perfume, sweet like Arabi. You don't seem to be very popular, Mr. Lafitte. I'm sorry, but I don't know what you're talking about. I was thinking of that placard that I've seen posted about. Oh, uh, there, there's one on that tree. 
Reward. $500 for the capture of Jean Lafitte, dead or alive. Signed by the governor, William C.C. Claiborne. $500 reward for me shows that Governor Claiborne has a sense of humor. (laughs) My name is Crawford. Senator Crawford of the Louisiana legislature. Oh, you weren't thinking of collecting that reward, were you, Senator? Hardly. But the British have a sense of humor, too. The British? And they make rather good friends. I'm sure the British think you're worth far more than $500. You think so? Try some of this wine, Senator. Thank you. Does my offer interest you? Very much. But it could stand a little more explanation. These are war times, Mr. Lafitte. You and your men could constitute a power in these waters. A power for the British? I thought you said you were a senator from Louisiana. That, I'm sure, needs no explanation. I see. Try to be back from your voyage in a fortnight. You will have British callers at Barataria. This is excellent wine. How much for the cask? Ten pieces of eight, ten Napoleons, or $500 American paper. (laughs) You don't think much of American paper, do you, Mr. Lafitte? I'm a businessman, Senator, and I don't think much of America's chances. Neither do I. I'll have the wine delivered to you. If you'll give me your... Will you excuse me? I have some important business. Of course. Uh, Wasn't that Miss Annette de Remy's carriage that just passed? I thought I recognized Miss Annette and her Aunt Charlotte. It, uh, was their carriage. You'll excuse me, Senator, but we're not exchanging confidences yet. A thieves market. I can't understand why the authorities permit it. Oh, Aunt Charlotte, you always say that, but you always come. Don't be impertinent, Annette. One Spanish dollar. Perfume sweet like Araby. Madame, madame, only one Spanish dollar. My man, did you come by these things honestly? Huh? Uh, do, I, uh, do I not look like an honest man? You certainly do not. Hmm. Oh, Aunt Charlotte, please. He looks as if he'd cut anyone's throat for a picayune. Oh, me? <laughs> me, Dominique you, the cannoneer of Napoleon. Mademoiselle, Napoleon and me. Oh, never mind the details. How much is this perfume? Oh, uh, that one. Three Spanish dollars. But, madame, these are oh, sweet like the breath of angels. Huh. It smells more like liniment. Oh, madame, madame, impossible. Behold, I drink it. So, mm. madame, you are right, it is liniment. Come along, Annette, I've seen enough of it. Annette, where did she go? Annette, where are you? Annette, Annette. Annette. You're more beautiful every time I see you. Thank you, Mr. Lafitte. You were late today, Annette. I couldn't help it. My sister sailed for France. She's going to be to be married on the boat. There was such a crowd at the boat to see her off, I thought I'd never get away. I was in terror that I wouldn't see you. And in terror that I would. Oh, Jean. What are we going to do? Marry me. We could sail to France, too, like your sister. Mm, marry you. And I suppose you'd print the wedding invitation on the back of Governor Claiborne's reward for you. Dead or alive. My sweet, you can have the governor's ears for a wedding present. <laughs> oh, darling. Won't you ever be serious? You're in danger every hour. Every minute that I'm near you. Oh, sure. We can't hide behind bushes and trees all our lives. Dearest, I want you to be able to come to my house like other men who... Who would... are more respectable? Who are more honored. Oh, can't you understand? I want to be proud of my love. Well, there's nothing in your life I can share. I have wealth. I have barataria. Barateur is the word for cheap. It's a kingdom with a thousand men and ships that sail the Caribbean and the Gulf. I can give you anything you... Yes, anything but self-respect. Yes, you're right, Annette. I can't give you that. Oh, Jean. Listen. What's this? Trouble. You better go. Hey, boss. Boss, Dominic, what's wrong? The governor. The governor is coming. He's bringing soldiers. We show him. No, eh? no steel, Dominic. Tell the men to carry the boats to the bayou. Load them with every piece of merchandise we have and shove off. Let the people stay, but the men and goods go. Hurry up. Now. Aye, aye, boss. Mm, very clever of you, Lapit. 
An hour ago, you were very busy here selling your stolen goods. And now, nothing. Very clever indeed. Thank you, Governor Claiborne. Praise from you is high honor. <laughs> Only fear of injury to some of New Orleans citizens prevents me from bringing you to justice now. But they shall hear the judgment we have passed on you. Mr. Collector? Yes, Governor. Read the placard there on that tree. Read it aloud. Yes, Governor. For making himself a general nuisance, I offer $10,000 reward for Governor Claiborne's ears. Signed, Jean Lafitte. <laughs> you take this as a joke, do you, Lafitte? You'll find nothing to laugh at when General Andrew Jackson arrives in New Orleans. I respect General Jackson. He said there's no room under the American flag for such bandits as you and your men. Do you laugh at that, sir? No. But you have bigger and more respectable bandits who laugh at your flag, making fortunes by selling sugar and cotton to the British. We all have faults, Governor. But I have respected the American flag, and we've never attacked a ship that flies it. <laughs> scare us out of the temple? Where are we now? No place. Three days at sea and not a hall yet. Shut up, Fisher. Ooh. Well, Dominic, come in. Uh, what do you want? It is Brown Boss on the Vulcan. He just scuttled a merchantman. She's burning. Does she look like a good haul? Well, boss, she... She's American. An American boat? Where? Two points off the starboard bow and she's up in flames. Well, this is pretty bad news. Get on deck. Uh, Lay her into the wind. Stay by to lower the longboats as soon as she loses way. Light no lights. Aye, aye, boy. She's burning pretty fast, boss. Can you see her name yet? Name, not yet. Oh, boss, there's the Vulcan. Brown is standing by. I'll attend to Mr. Brown later. Hey, 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 what is that? We yours. <laughs> Never before have I heard a barking fish. <laughs> there it is. Get that dog fish up. Hey, there's more than a dog here, boss. There's a girl, too. Get her in the boat. <laughs> a girl, eh? Well, well. Oh, a little pink mackerel, eh? <coughs> Lay her down over there. You all right? Yes. What boat is that? Speak up. Corinthian. Out of where? <coughs> New Orleans. They, they attack us. They make me... Jump over the... Uh, boss, uh, ask her, is there anybody left on board? We'll let Captain Brown tell us that. Pull over to the Vulcan. And all those other people on that ship. Did you put them off in boats, Mr. Brown? How many boats did you put them in? None. You remember my order, Mr. Brown? That all hands on a captured ship should have a chance for their lives. We're through taking orders from you, Lafitte. You are, Mr. Brown? My orders forbid boarding any ship flying the American flag. That's the flag I'm under, up there in the masthead. The black flag, eh? We're men without a country, Mr. Brown. Men cast up by the sea. Perhaps we'll be Americans someday. But not you, Mr. Brown, because I'm going to hang you now. You ain't going to hang nobody, Lafitte. You're just a blubber-smelling pirate like the rest of us. And you've given your last command. Oh! Any more complaints? Anybody like to follow Captain Brown? And stir yourselves. All hands to the braces. Spare where they are. Set your course for Barataria. Boss, hey, bo boss. What about that uh, pink mackerel, the girl? She comes with us until she's well enough to leave. Well, she's all that is left of the Corinthian, boss. She make a pretty bad witness. I obey my own orders. She sailed under the American flag, and she's safe from us. I say! Aye, aye, boss. <laughs> Everything from the Corinthian is to be kept out of sight. Nothing taken from that boat must be sold. You understand, Dominique? Oh, well, I know. You have your breakfast now, boss? Put it down there. Yes, sir. 
Good morning, Mr. Captain. Oh, good morning. How do you like Baratarian? Well, I, I don't know yet. Your men say that I give them hemp fever. <laughs> Did you hear that, Dominique? <laughs> a gentleman does not laugh at a lady. <laughs> Dominique, she says that you're not a gentleman. No, I say it to you. What makes you think that I'm not a gentleman? Your rings tell me. And what do you know about rings? One ring, it is a gentleman. Two rings, it is a vain and foolish man. Now that you have enlightened me as to my multiple defects, go back where you belong. Dominic, huh? keep this magpie out of my sight. Hey, come along, my uh, little cabbage. But you did not tell me why I give the men hemp fever. Hemp is a rope, and men sometimes die of a rope. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, the men are right. You're a walking death warrant for all of us. Me? Come here to me. What's the matter with your shoe? They squeak. I know that, but why? Because they're in the ocean. Well, take them out of the ocean. You're in a gentleman's home. A gentleman's home? No wonder the fine people of New Orleans, they laugh at you. They laugh at... How do you know? Were you ever inside their homes? Yes. I worked there. You worked there? Yes. You scrubbed their floors, but you've got nerve enough to stand there and tell me I'm no... All right. Since you're such a monument of judgment, you can stay here and make yourself useful. What can you do? I can cook, but I won't. You certainly won't. What else? I can sew, but I won't. Do you eat? Yes, thank you. But you won't. Oh! Before you eat, you'll learn to make yourself useful. Scipio, give her the keys to this closet. She's going to learn to scrub floors. Yes, sir. Here they are. Boss! Boss coming in. Mm. Give me that telescope. Yeah, my cover here. Can you see? Who is she, boss? British man of war, Sophia. Oh, we'll let them hell with it. Eh? No, no, she's sending a boat under a flag of truce. Oh. Lock up that mackerel of yours while these Englishmen are here. Aye, aye, boss. Come along, my uh, little toadstool. We'll what lock have, you up. What have I done? Huh? Nothing, nothing yet. That is why we we'll lock you up. You lock me up because you're afraid of me. Uh, you are afraid that I'll tell those British dancers that you burned a Corinthian. Uh, and I will, I will if you lock uh, me up. No, you no, no, my go. pink rosebud. You, you will not if I lock you up. Go, go on, oh. in the closet. Join us in our attack against the Americans, Mr. Lafitte. Every condition of those letters will be fulfilled. It's a generous offer, Captain Lockyer. Generous. The rank of captain in the British Navy and $30,000 in gold. Will the Americans match that? No. They've only offered five hundred dollars for my head. While we offer a full pardon to all of you, we will guarantee that... You lock me up? Ha-ha, <laughs> but you forget. I have a key. Uh, who is this young lady? <clears throat> Come in, Gretchen. These gentlemen are officers of the British Navy. They command big warships. They are interested in who you are. You're certainly not American. Are you Dutch? Tell them just who you are. I, uh, I am the friend of Mr. Lafitte. <clears throat> then suppose, uh, just a friendly gesture, you leave us alone. Please? Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Lafitte, will you fight for the British? I must have a week for my reply. Does it take a week to make up your mind? On matters as important as this, my men have as much to say as I have. We are a republic and must put it to a vote. I say no. Well, I say yes. I say we fight for the British, and why not? Aye, that's it, Granby. Give it to him. Give it England to him. England will shake America like a dog shakes a rat. Here, here, aye. And what do you get from Claiborne? Nothing but the cramp iron, the cat and the yard arm. But England offers gold and a clean pardon. Who's for England? Yes! Shut your grab traps. The boss ain't had his say yet. Chuck your love. What do you say, I boss? What do you say, You I... for England, yeah? You scum of the world. You sewer-bred rats. Every country in the world has spewed you out. There's no land you can call your own. You, Jacques, you like it here, hmm? The air is sweet, hmm? 
different from the stench of the sewers where you hid after you murdered your father. And you, Hans, the spoiler of the dead, the slinking grave robber of Hamburg. Miguel, the petty pickpocket of Madrid. And you, Dominique. Boss, please, I... Uh, hmm. The pet cannoneer of Napoleon. Oh, well. <laughs> and Mouse, you deserter. What hole will you hide in to escape the lash in the yard arm? And the brave Gramby. Shall I tell the story of Pensacola? Of the nun who prayed for your soul with your knife in her throat? And I'm the rottenest of you all. Because I'm your boss. All of us, the yellow-livered spawn of the world, thrown up here by a sea that's too decent to hold us. We land on the only shore that has let us stay. Louisiana. Louisiana, with long moss that hangs from the trees like the gray hair of a mother. And what do we do to her? We rob and kill. But still, she lets us stay. And now, for the first time, this mother needs help. A powerful enemy is landing on her shores. You heard her call, you white-livered squids. And what do you propose to do? Turn tail and run whining to the British to lick the hand that you're afraid to bite. But Louisiana will never show the white feather. Neither will America. It's a young nation unprepared with few weapons and few defenders. And it's getting licked. But I'm going to give it all I have. Who fights with me for America? Me, Dominique, you! Me, Gretchen van der Liefhoff! That was the first act of The Buccaneer, starring Clark Gable with the Lamp Bradna, Akim Timiroff, and Gertrude Michael. In just a moment, the curtain goes up on Act Two. But during our intermission, let's drop in on the Brownings. It's after dinner, and the family is gathered round the fire. As the scene opens, the two girls, Dot and Midge, are talking about Miss Enright, the director of their high school club. She's going to be married, and the club is giving her a shower, but... Uh... Gosh, Midge, what can we get for? I'm just stony broke. Me too, Dot. Let's ask Dad. Shh, not while he's doing bills. Ah, uh, watch out, girls, I hear you. But I just can't give you anything for presents right now. Uh, perhaps your mother can help you. Oh, so I'm to solve the problem. Well, here's a suggestion, girls. How about a serving spoon, like the one we got the other day? Oh, there were two pieces, Mother. A cheese server, too. Oh, uh, you mean the ones you saved me money on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we certainly fooled you, Dad. Two lovely pieces for only a quarter. And the box top from the large Lux package, Mother. Don't forget that. Gee, I bet Miss Enright would love one of those sets. <laughs> Enright with oh, Enright. Oh, Dad. <laughs> but it's a swell idea. A great big sparkling idea. Well, it'll certainly help us out. Don't let me forget. I'll order some more Lux tomorrow morning, and you girls can have all the box tops. Oh, swell. Then we could get extra sets for Christmas presents, too. Why wait till tomorrow? Let's go see what's in the house right now. Come on, Midge. Dibs on the bedroom box, Dad. The kitchen box is mine. So the race is on to collect the tops from the large boxes of Lux Flakes. In fact, people everywhere are eager to get these two beautiful pieces of original Rogers silver plate, a stunning serving spoon, and a handy cheese server. Don't fail to get yours. Just send the top from a large box of Lux Flakes and 25 cents in coin with your name and address to Lux, Meriden, M-E-R-I-D-E-N, Meriden, Connecticut. Mr. DeMille. We continue with The Buccaneer, starring Clark Gable, with Olamp Bradna, Hakeem Timiroff, and Gertrude Michael. <laughs> with the cheers of his men still ringing in his ears, Jean Lafitte sailed alone to New Orleans to place his army of pirates at the disposal of the government. The governor has accepted his offer... And now, before returning to Barataria, Lafitte brings the news to Annette. Jean, you shouldn't have come here. <laughs> shouldn't I? No. But I'm glad you did. Oh, Jean. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Look at me. Carefully. What do you see? A man who is very dear to me. What else? A man who shouldn't be here. Nothing more. 
You don't notice a, a difference in me? No. <laughs> what is it? I'm respectable. <laughs> you... Yes, my good woman, respectable, at last. Oh, you precious fool. Whatever are you talking about? It's very simple. Governor Claiborne and I are friends. They've accepted my offer to save New Orleans. No, Jean. Oh, please be careful. That is true, Lafitte, Claiborne, Jackson. Those names will live in history. Oh, Jean, tell me. I'm on my way to the tailors now. If I give them 200 men, it'll be a captain's uniform. 500, I'm a colonel. 1,000, it's a general's epaulets. The governor thanked me for my loyalty. Why, we're thicker than thieves. Well, closer than peas in a pod. Come here to me. Oh, dear. You know, it's really not a bad feeling. What? Respectability. And how could you judge of that, Mr. Lafitte? And Charlotte. Good evening, madame. Annette, you'd better see if any of the silverware is missing. Madame, I found something a lot more precious than silverware. I'll take this miniature of your niece. <gasps> Do you mind? Mr. Lafitte! You have caught me red-handed. But I'll make my escape. Goodbye, madame. I go to an ex-Louisiana to Barrett <laughs> Much afraid, Governor Claiborne, that you've been taken in. Would you mind being more explicit, Senator Crawford? There can be no doubt of it, Governor. And every man on this defense council will back me up. Look at the papers that John Lafitte showed you. No British insignia, no seal attached to any of them. Now, these letters are forgery. I think Senator Crawford is right. They seem scarcely credible. A commission in the Royal Navy? <laughs> There's probably a scheme to lure Jackson to New Orleans so the British can land at Mobile. Oh, well, that sounds like common sense to me. What shall we answer him? I know the exact answer, Governor. Dead pirates make the best pirates. I right, send him right, right, exactly. Very well. Right. We'll send our ships to storm Barataria. <laughs> While you were gone. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice, Gretchen. You see that, Dominic? Yeah. <laughs> That's our flag now. Yeah, that is pretty, eh? Huh? <laughs> but do you know for why it has 15 stars and 15 stripes? Why, yes. It's because, uh, 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 uh Dominic, huh? Do you know why it has 15 stars and 15 stripes? Oh, certainly I know. It is because, uh, well, because, uh, you. Oh, well, because the boss president like it better that way. You are both very bad Americans. Every star and stripe is a state. Sew them together, and they are the United States. Oh, <laughs> oh well, of course. Oh, and I'll certainly. make it for you, Mr. Boss, a present. Mm. Well, thanks, funny one. Don't make us think of you when you're home in, uh, uh, what's the name of that place? Don't speak, I'm Zydeze. Fine, fine. But don't speak, I'm Zydeze is not my home anymore. Oh, yes, it is. You certainly can't stay here. I certainly will stay here. What? Pack your things. You're leaving today. I would go with you. Well, we're going into battle. Women don't know anything about fighting. Ha! Huh. You don't know anything about women. Does any man. Uh, why don't you want to go home? Oh, because... Well, that's not a good enough excuse. Mr. Boss, who is that girl? The one in the picture you bring back. Oh, that... A lovely lady who lives in New Orleans. Oh. Is that why you want me to go home? You're a little fool, aren't you? Yes. I know that before you say it. Her hair is very pretty, too. And her eyes, they... I will go, boss. Boss, boss, American ships are putting in. Aha, there you are, Dominique. <laughs> American boats, they come to join us. Come on, give them a welcome. Hey, ring the bell. Ring the bell. All right, you men, get into the longboats. Pilot them to the landing. Viva los Americanos! Viva! Hey, boss. What are they doing? Firing on us. Fine friends, you got your feet. Let's give them a taste of the old No, hold your fire. Get back, I tell you. Don't fire. Dominic. Yes, boss. Dominic, get everybody out of here. Get them back to the bayous. Tell them to hide in the swamp. Hey, boss. Back to the bayous. Follow you. Into the boat. Hey, get your families out. Get back to the swamp! We let them come as friends, and they shut us down like dogs. Boss, boss, you pushed the boat all day to the swamps. Maybe you sleep a little now. The stars are out. 
Not for those men lying in the sand back there. Can't you forget your thought just for one moment? No. They'll hang every man they caught today. A one day's trial in New Orleans and four feet of rope. Maybe, boss. But what those ships did to your men is only what you have done to other people. That's not true. I saw it. On the Corinthians. Those were never my orders. But you were the boss. Yes, that's right. I am the boss. And I'm to blame for every man dead at Barataria. And somebody's going to pay for it. Now you want to kill some more. Oh, you're a funny man, boss. All you think of is fighting and killing. Don't you know there's such a thing in the world as love? Yes. Now that's gone, too. Now you cannot marry that lady of the picture. Don't bother me with your silly question. But love is not a silly question. What do you know about it? A great deal. I'm in love. Yes? With whom? With you. I don't know whether to bow to you or use this paddle on you. It does not matter which. I love you. When you're a little more grown up, you'll find some fine young... I'm more grown up now than you will ever be. You spend your life fighting. And fighting is for little boys, not for men. And you're a very bad little boy. But I love you. Oh, it's too late for all that. Too late for me and too early for you. No. Never it is too late and never it is too early to love. Oh, boss. Boss, you don't even know what it is to be happy. I know a life you never even dreamed could be. You laugh when I say don't speak, I'm side of Zay. But there, there's an old little house on a little river where the tulips, they are... I'd turn your river to poison. No, boss. And every day we say hello to an old stork who makes his nest on the roof. That is good luck. And all day the windmill sings, ka-ching, ka-chung, ka-ching, ka-chung. <sighs> yes, it's a sweet dream, little Gretchen. Then I thank you for it. Oh, don't thank me. Take me there. And leave my men rotting in cells or hiding like snakes in these swamps? Nothing will make you forget. No. The blood of my men is my own blood. We've got to get out of here. We've got to get on to New Orleans. I'll get those men out of jail if... If you have to kill more to do it. General Jackson must have known all about this. Jackson must be in New Orleans now. I'll see him there. You're a funny man. There General he is, Montana. General Jackson. General Jackson. Where is he, I can't General see. Jackson, ma'am, why, he's just he's coming through the door. Oh, look. Yes, there he is. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies, gentlemen, I'm honored by this gracious welcome to New Orleans. What can we do, General? How can we aid you? We need powder, food, and we need flints for our rifles. But above everything, we need men. Men to fight beside us for America. And now... I must beg you to excuse me. Time for your bill, Andy. Uh, what? Oh, no, no, not now, Mr. Peavy. Uh, where's the defense counsel? Uh, waiting inside. I'll show you, Andy. Under you to carry a musket, General, but we have a right to know what'll happen to New Orleans. Before I'll surrender this city, gentlemen... I'll burn it to the ground. New Orleans will not be sacrificed to your madness. No, I begin to know America's friends from our enemies, Senator Crawford. The legislature will meet at once to discuss surrender. I believe, Senator, your sympathies are with the enemy. Better to be in the hands of the enemy than in the hands of a maniac. Uh, Mr. Peavy. Uh, what's bothering you, Andy? Show these gentlemen out. All right. Skedaddle now, skedaddle. Come on, come on. And uh, shut the door, Mr. Peavy. I want to be alone for a while. Stay as you are, General Jackson, and don't call your guard. I have you covered. I'll call my guard when I'm ready. You seem to be looking for an easy way out of life. Where'd you come from? I've been standing outside that window. I want to speak to you. Who are you? My name is Lafitte. The pirate? The privateer. With a price on his head. I'll have no truck with men of your breed, Lafitte. At this moment, you're not in a position to be exclusive. You're an impudent devil and... What do you want? The lives of my men. Where should I give a horseshoe in Hades for their lives? Among other things... To save your own. Then I refuse. Your men are pirates. A scum following this city in its hour of need. And I don't relish threat. And I don't relish talk. You'll sign the order for their release. Now. Uh, don't shoot, uh, Mr. Peavy. That's an old trick, General. I'll keep my eyes on you. As you please. 
Mr. Peavy, this is Mr. Lafitte, the pirate. Evening, Mr. Lafitte. Shall I pull the trigger now, Andy? Mr. Peavy stands outside of windows, too. Have you anything to say, Lafitte, before I answer Mr. Peavy's question? Well, <clears throat> I have some personal property to dispose of. A matter of 8,000 flints. Flints? And... Musket flints? Where? Where the powder is. How much powder? 30 kegs, enough to work our cannon for a week. Put your gun on the table, Mr. Lafitte. Thank you. Get out, Mr. Peavy. Andy, can't I tie him up for you first? No, no, thank you. Go on. Are you lying about those flints? No, and I'm not lying about my men. The flints, are they in the city? When the last one of my men is released, I'll tell you. How many men have you? Enough to win this battle for you. Where are they? In the swamps and in jail. Well, by the They're men who live by fighting, deserters from every nation under the sun. I'm a cannoneer of Napoleon, the blackest rogue unhung, and the best shot. All fighters. And all with bloody hands, eh? Like a soldier's. A soldier fights for his country. That's what we asked to do, and we're answered by bullets. You didn't ask me. I do now. General Jackson. What is it? What do you mean Monsieur by... Monsieur Vivre, he must see you. This fellow here, Andy, I guess he wants to see you, all right. Monsieur General, c'est incroyable, mais c'est vrai. Les Anglais ont apparu sur Speak English, man. Dans la maison même, moi je vais échapper seulement. Speak English. General, this man says the British have appeared at his plantation. Where is that? Eight miles from the city, on the Bayou Cattle. Are they in force? The whole army. We'll hold the line of the Rodriguez Canal. Mr. Vivre, call the officer of the guard. Have the bugler sound assembly. Colonel Butler, we are march at once by the Chalmette Road. The Chalmette Road, General. Major Hans. Get your Mississippi dragoons into their saddles. Take the advance. Yes, General. Get General Coffee here. Assemble all commands at Chalmette. Get every man and musket into the ranks. Rouse the town. Body of death, I need men. What's your price, Lafitte? Full pardon for my men. And for yourself? One hour's start when the battle's over. It's a bargain. I'll sound the release. Make it a carte blanche on the jail. All right. Now get your devils out of the swamp and the jail and bring them to Chalmette. Crawford hasn't surrendered the city. Body of death. If he gets that legislature to surrender... It won't. If Crawford isn't there... Then by the seven plagues of Egypt, he shouldn't be there. If someone has to run him through. Thanks. I knew I'd like you, General. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. That was Act Two of The Buccaneer, starring Clark Gable with Olamp Bradner, Akim Demiroff, and Gertrude Michael, whom we hear in the third act following this short intermission. But before Mr. DeMille brings you, as his intermission guest, one of America's most famous authors, let me just give the ladies in our audience this reminder. It's thrifty to buy several big boxes of Lux Flakes at a time, so you'll have it handy always in bathroom, kitchen, and laundry. Sweaters, blouses, and dresses, as well as undies and stockings, stay new-looking longer when you give them regular Lux care. That's why so many women find Lux Flakes the finest clothes economy known. And let me remind you to have pencil and paper ready at the end of this program to jot down full details of the Rogers Silver Plate offer. And now, here's our producer ready to introduce our famous guest of the evening. One of the luckiest moves I ever made occurred many years ago when I bought a novel for the screen from Rupert Hughes. That started a friendship with one of the most talented men I've ever known. Rupert Hughes has written some 35 novels, hundreds of brilliant articles and short stories, a celebrated biography of George Washington, an encyclopedia of American music, contributed to a monumental history of the world, and is a real authority on early American pirates. He's been a director, writer, and producer for the screen, discovered Lawrence Tibbet, is a recognized sculptor, and is the uncle of Howard Hughes, the aviator. He sleeps four hours a day, smokes 20 cigars, drinks 30 cups of coffee, and is one of the few famous men in Hollywood whose telephone number you can find by simply looking it up in the book. But how did I get in here? I was looking for my lost dog. He had me on a leash, but I got away. Oh, I know you. You're Dr. DeMille, aren't you? Doctor? I read that a college gave you the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. Why? <laughs> Probably because I have to do so much doctoring on the scripts you writers turn out. Ouch. <laughs> As for that, didn't your own college make you a Doctor of Letters, too? Yes, but what good does it do me? I can't even write a prescription. Well, that doubtless saves quite a few lives. Speaking of saving lives, Cecil, I had an idea. 
I stole it from that glorious speech of Lafitte's which Clark Gable delivers so powerfully. It shows how a vicious pirate offers to help turn a black danger into a golden victory. It's happened before, it can happen again. It ought to happen all the time. Pirates were people whom circumstances turned into criminals. Our country contains so much crime because, while a large percentage of lawbreakers are of low mental caliber, we still find men and women of tremendous courage, often of immense cleverness, devoting their gifts to evil instead of good. Almost all boys want to be pirates, fight Indians, or be policemen. The main thing is they want to fight somebody, anybody. Thousands of them go wrong. We try to check them with prison cells and hard labor. But nothing seems to do any good. Why? Because we try to repress them. We make no use of all that courage and restlessness. There's our crime against our criminals. It seems to me that what we ought to do, what we've got to do, is this. When we find a boy or a girl with a wild streak of adventure a ferocious resentment of the dull life, we must offer that fiery soul an opportunity to use its energy for the benefit of itself and of everybody. We couldn't save them all, but we could save hundreds. We ought to learn a lesson from the feet. Realizing there's no taming criminals, the thing for us to do is to find some way of using them for their own happiness and ours. Have you a suggestion? I'm only a doctor of letters, not of souls or bodies. Hmm. Then shall we get on with the program? By all means, but before I go, would you tell me one thing? Does either of those two nice girls get Clark Gable, or do they divide him up? <laughs> Wait and see. Pity he's not the Gable twins, the Gable sex tuplets. Uh, Ru Rupert, please go quietly. I can take a hint, but first, thank you, Cecil, for bringing us these splendid stars and plays week after week. This theater, I think, occupies a definite place in American social life, I'm flattered to have been asked here. Goodbye. Hmm. The key's under the mat for you, Rupert. Any time. Goodbye. The Buccaneer, starring Clark Gable with Olamp Bradner, Akeem Tamirov, and Gertrude Michael. <laughs> With the British on the march to New Orleans, a swift series of events crowded each other in the race for defense. Lafitte, with the order for release in his pocket, opens the jail doors for his men. We are free! They both, they got us free! <laughs> in a fair fight with the traitor Crawford, the buccaneer pirate made certain that the legislature would not surrender the city. I... I'll fight you tomorrow at the dueling hooks. Oh, no, Mr. Crawford. You didn't give my men at Barataria a formal invitation to be killed. But here's yours. <laughs> With Crawford dead, the city sprang to arms. Out went the call to Lafitte's men hiding in the swamps. Through the bayous they came, paddling madly toward New Orleans, the woods echoing to their battle cry. Into the city they poured, up to the line of defense, to fight side by side with the regulars, repulsing every advance made by the British, driving them back inch by inch, until at last came the welcome cry. Victory! <laughs> My little sparrow, it was wonderful, eh? Everywhere you hear now, Lafitte, the great Lafitte, the brave Lafitte, Lafitte, Lafitte. <laughs> His pirates, they saved the city. And I was there too, was I not, Dominique? Yeah. I helped the boss too when I carried the powder. <laughs> oh, certainly. <laughs> oh, my little cockroach, it is so good. <laughs> no more they hang us, eh? <laughs> you know, Tonight they give a victory ball, the great victory ball. And for who? Eh? <laughs> for Lafitte. <laughs> oh, well, of course, Jackson, he will be there too. But the victory ball it is yes. for Lafitte. And she will be there. Huh? In a lovely dress, and he will be a hero. Mm? And perhaps he will kiss her. Uh, what is this? And then she will marry him. Oh, well... <laughs> That, that is how it is, eh? Oh, I cannot help that I love him. He says my shoes squeak, but he makes my heart squeak, too. Oh. Well, what is it that you want? I want to go to the victory ball. 
I want to wear more beautiful dress than hers. I want to sparkle more beautiful jewels than she has. I want my hair so lovely, her always look like hay. I want to be so grand and shiny, he won't even look at her when I walk by. I want to make him love me. Oh, Dominic. <laughs> oh, by Jiminy the Amal. And who can do this for my little mackerel? Eh? Me. Me, Dominic, you. Uh, I have more jewels than anybody else. I have the beautiful dresses, too. I have all you want. <laughs> look, look in that chest. Huh? Dominic. Uh, oh, how wonderful. Uh, and all for you, my little shrimp. But where did you get these things from? Huh? Where? Oh, I don't remember. I think, uh, I think off the floor. His Excellency, the Governor of Louisiana, Mr. Daniel Carroll, Captain John Lafitte. To Captain Lafitte, General Jackson. I have the honor to inform you, sir, that I have dispatched letters to the President commending you and your men for service to the country. Thank you, sir. Your example was expiring to a follow. Oh, General Jackson. Oh, yes. Your officers are brilliant. As well as brave. Oh, uh, Mr. Remy, may I present uh, Captain Lafitte, who has won the respect of the whole army. Of the entire city. Captain Lafitte. Your respect, mademoiselle, means everything. May I have this dance? Certainly. Captain. This way, mademoiselle. Let's get out of here. Now. Oh, you. I'm so happy I could cry. Let's laugh instead. Out on the balcony where we can be alone. Oh, Jean, it's all true. It, it is true, isn't it? <laughs> you mean, uh, am I respectable? <laughs> I hope so. That it. Yes. What, you? I, I've been trying to think of something nice to say. Something sentimental. Uh, well, I can feel the words. Uh, they get right up to here, and then... Oh, don't bother. I know what they are. I'm thinking them, too. Darling. Good evening. Oh, good evening. They told me Captain Lafitte was here. Yes, mademoiselle. Oh, Captain. Captain, how nice to find you. You remember me? We met one time on the sea. You do appear in strange places, mademoiselle. Oh, uh, this is Miss DeRibi, Miss... Uh... Oh, uh, how do you do? How do you do? <laughs> the captain is really a delightful, uh, wicked man. Don't you think so? I found him both. Mm, but mostly wicked. <laughs> you flatter me, mademoiselle. <laughs> Shall we dance in it? But you have not admired my new coiffure. Yes, yes, yes. It's very nice. My but... dress? Does it not excite you? <laughs> not as much as your presence, mademoiselle. Oh, now you tease me. Oh, it is a beautiful dress, mademoiselle. And I know where you had it made. Oh, yes? In Gay Paris. Oh, no. In Gay New Orleans. Your dressmaker made one just like it for my sister, Mary... Your sister? Yes. This has the same uh, same tucks and everything. She could took it with her when she sailed the Corinthian. The Corinthian? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> what a strange little creature. I I've seen her before somewhere. Annette, your sister was, was on the Corinthian? Yes, why? Jean, why do you look like that? Have you heard anything about Mary? No. No, nothing. Oh. Now I remember that girl. She was on the dock with Mary. She was selling on the Corinthian, too. I'm going to ask her. Annette, please. Please don't ask her, Annette. But why, Jean, what is it? Annette, believe me, trust me. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to find that girl. Wait, mademoiselle, please. I want to speak but to you. But I, I must go. I, uh, you you won the Corinthian, won't you? No. No, you make a mistake. But I remember you well. Anything I wrong, Miss DeRimi? This girl, she was on the Corinthian. The Corinthian? Why, it's never been reported from Havana. Where did you leave the Corinthian, miss? I, I don't remember. You didn't fall overboard, did you? Yes. Yes, I fall overboard. The big splash and I swim. Well, good night. You didn't swim all the way back, did you? Oh, he picked me up. That man over there. 
Please, I, I must go now. Oh, he picked you up. One of Lafitte's men picked you up. Yeah, me, Dominique, you. I pulled this little mackerel out. Oh, what is all this? Where is the Corinthian? Where did you leave my sister? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But how? Why, you're wearing her minute too. No. No, 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 that's mine. It's the one I gave her. That's my mother's picture. How did you get it? I, I found it. I found it. Please. Oh, no, you didn't. And you didn't find that dress. Aunt Charlotte. Aunt Charlotte! She's wearing Marie's dress. She's from the Corinthians. The beach men brought her. Where's the feet? Ask him. There's evidence for you. The Corinthian was attacked by Lafitte, wasn't it? Speak up, girl. Oh, no, he couldn't have. He couldn't. Speak up. You hear? Let this girl go. Why? She was a witness. So am I. I was there when the Corinthian burned. He, he admits it. No, Jean, I don't believe it. You, you couldn't have... Now, you wouldn't believe the truth if you heard it, Governor. Tell me, I'll believe Tell it. Tell us all. Gentlemen, the Corinthian was sunk, and every soul on board but one was lost. Not by you, Jean. Not by you. What difference does it make now, Annette? I was their boss. My son. My son was on that ship. There were women on that boat. Every passenger lost. He can't get away now. Get a rope. One moment, please. This city is under martial law. He's outside the law. He sank the Corinthians. They killed all hands. This is no affair of yours, General Jackson. I am in command here. Lafitte, are you responsible for sinking the Corinthian? I am responsible. That's enough. Hang him. Come on, take your pilot out. Just a minute. General, surely you're not going to defend this man? No, sir. But I made a deal with him. He joined our forces and he fought well. And for that service, I promised him a pardon for his men and one hour's start for himself. And by the eternal, that one hour start he shall have. Thank you, General. Annette, I'm not as guilty in this as you think. I knew nothing of your sister. For your belief in me, I am grateful. But unworthy. Gentlemen, I leave you. An American, New Orleans. Well, I think we make it, boss. They never catch this boat now. What flag we break out, boss? We have no flag. Huh? Well, what course we steer? Where we go? Straight to... Straight out to sea. Aye, aye, boss. Bien, mon capitaine. All hands straight up! Square away the yard! Mr. Boss. Gretchen, you shouldn't have come here. I go where my boss go. We're going out to sea. This deck under our feet is our only country. Well, it's a good deck. And our home port, sooner or later, will be the bottom of the sea. I'll be there, too. With you, boss. <laughs> John Lafitte has sailed back into the past. In his place stands Clark Gable. Our evening would be only half complete without a word from Mr. Gable. Well, I'll make it brief, Mr. DeBell. Those who saw your picture know without my telling them what a fine performance Frederick Marsh turned in as John Lafitte. I'm very grateful to you for giving me the chance to step into Lafitte's boots on the air. If I measured up to the standards set by Mr. Marsh, I'll be still happier. I'd like to thank everyone in the cast. But better yet, Mr. DeBell, I really think that Miss Bradner, Mr. Tamirov, and Miss Michael should come up here and take their own vows. Uh, let the ladies talk first. I'm a very polite fellow. <laughs> thank you, Akim. Oh, I don't know how I sounded, Mr. DeMille, playing a Dutch girl with my French accent in an American play. <laughs> However, though, I'm a very loyal listener. This was my first time on a Lux Radio Theater, and if it's as nice as this all the time... I surely hope you let me come back. <laughs> very, very nice, Alain. Uh, now, Miss Michael. Well, you seem to be running the show, Akeem, but it's all right. Fire away. <laughs> it's all quite understandable, Mr. DeMille, with Mr. Tamaroff playing a big part in your nude picture, Union Pacific. I think he's entitled to get at the microphone as soon as he can. Goodness knows he's trying to. Shh. Gertle, Gertle, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours, Akeem. Thank you, Mr. DeMille, for a grand evening. Good night, Gertrude. 
Now, Mr. Tamirov, go ahead with your latest barrage. Well, I just want to tell you, Mr. DeMille, I have all my homework done for my part in Union Pacific. You make me a bullwhacker, so I practice for three months, and now I can use the bullwhip like nobody's business. I can snap a cigarette out of your mouth. You know, like that. You want me to try it? No, I've temporarily stopped smoking. Uh, too bad. But let me tell you, uh, making pictures is the best education in the world. Why, once I played a deaf mute, so now I can speak the sign language. Another time I was a fiddle player, so I studied and became a beautiful violinist. Well, sometime I'd like to play a man who makes a million dollars. <laughs> Good night, Mr. DeMille. Hey, Good night, Bo Faker. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille will bring us exciting news of next week's play in stars. Meanwhile, I want to tell you more about that original Roger Silverplate offer that many people, including the Brownings, are taking advantage of right now. You see, the makers of Lux Flakes are giving us a serving spoon and cheese server for only 25 cents and the top from a large box of Lux. Both pieces are original Roger Silverplate in the graceful allure design that matches the teaspoon so many of you ordered from us in the spring. You know, with Christmas only six weeks away, this is a swell chance to get some lovely gifts for your friends. Give them this twin set, the handsome serving spoon and handy little cheese server. It's an exclusive pattern, one they can't buy at any store. The only way to get it is through this offer. Why, I bet they'll be tickled pink to own such fine tableware. And so will you. It's so rich looking and gives such splendid wear. In fact... You get a certificate from the International Silver Company, the world's largest silversmiths, which guarantees satisfaction in regular use. Quite a bargain, isn't it? Why, here you are getting beauty and quality and guaranteed service for only 25 cents on a Lux box top. Just cut the top from a large box of Lux flakes. Write your name and address plainly on a piece of paper. Wrap it around 25 cents in coin. Please don't use stamps. And mail it with the box top, large size, to Lux, Meriden, M-E-R-I-D-E-N, Meriden, Connecticut. This offer is good only in the United States. I'll repeat that. To get your Rogers Silver Plate serving spoon and cheese server, send 25 cents in coin and your name and address with the top of a large box of Lux Flakes to Lux, Meriden, M-E-R-I-D-E-N, Meriden, Connecticut. And now, Mr. DeMille. A young girl, flattered by the attentions of a handsome and celebrated pianist, accompanies him to a nightclub. Suddenly, a woman walks over to their table. The pianist tries to leave. He's shot. And the girl finds herself the principal witness at a sensational murder trial. The facts that come out in the courtroom mount into one of the most dramatic and unusual plays we've ever offered you, Confession. And appearing in Confession next Monday night, you'll hear four famous Hollywood artists, Miriam Hopkins, Claude Rains, Richard Green, and Anne Shirley. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Miriam Hopkins in Confession with Claude Rains, Richard Green, and Anne Shirley. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Tonight we want to add our word of praise to the great work being done by the American Red Cross. All of us may have a part in the work of this great institution. Those who support the Red Cross form the backbone of a worldwide organization which gives its assistance generously and wholeheartedly to the victims of floods, hurricanes, fires, and other disasters which occur somewhere every year. Today, by your contribution to the Red Cross, you are helping to rebuild devastated areas, to care for the injured, and to provide for the helpless widows and orphans. Tomorrow, this great organization may be doing the same for you and yours. Give your support to the Red Cross now. Join your local chapter tomorrow. Olamp Bradner and Akim Tamirov appeared through courtesy of Paramount Studio. Miss Bradner's new film is called Say It in French, Mr. Tamirov's Ride a Crooked Mile. Frederick March will appear on the screen next in the Walter Wanger production Trade Winds. Louis Silvers is from 20th Century Fox Studio. He directed music for their new picture, Submarine Patrol. Your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.